This is a, said in the email, there is a guy by the name of Fisher Fulham, that I think for the last 15 years he's been a featured contributor to Fly Tire Magazine. And I don't know him in person. In fact, I've got a book that he authored that uh, outlines a lot of common, ordinary, round the house products. And his claim to fame is finding something that, like what we're doing today, is around the house and he makes a very innovative, creative, workable fly out of it. This material <clears throat> is called Easy Liner. And I'm not sure that you can even get this anymore. I'm going to be using um, a little pattern that looks like this, but it came in white. And I didn't know it came in different colors when I first started using this fly. So I went through the process of cutting all these suckers out and with a red permanent marker, <laughs> coloring all these little suckers. And I don't do that anymore. It is a better material. The body segments are a little puffier than what you're going to find here. Um, the, uh, it's, it's amazing some of this, what this guy comes up with. So I cut a little patch of this stuff. And you can see, see the edges on the right hand side? All the material you guys have, I've already trimmed. I've gone with my scissors on the outside edge and I'm just going to do some of the, the bottom. So you can see, I've, see what I've trimmed and what I haven't? Uh, and if you want a patch of this stuff, they've got a bunch of strips of this stuff over there that are already pretty well trimmed. But what I wanted to, to show you is I would, I would give anything to know how Fishy Fulham discovered this. <laughs> because you've got, you've, got this, you've got this strip like this, and it doesn't look like anything. But if you pull that last tip off, you have antenna for an ant. Now how he ever discovered that, I don't, but on these strips that you have, what you want to do, you want to count out five segments, okay? And I'm going to count one, two, three, four, five, and then I'm going to cut that off and this is what we're going to end up using for the fly. Mm -hmm. Now, before you start, you should have a little piece of foam. This is going to be the overbody. <clears throat> and you're going to want to, I'm going to stick this on a, you're going to want to end up with something that kind of looks like this, and I'll show you how to cut that. Uh, that is the going to be the overbody, and I'll show you how I'm doing that. I'm going to cut. I'm going to just cut. I don't want a, a total point. Is you, it doesn't give you enough to tie to, but I'm going to bevel that off. until I've got sort of a point. Then I'm going to take that material and I'm going to start near the back. I'm going to make a long, narrow slice to the front, both sides. And then that's the piece that forms the, the overbody, okay? So when we're tying this thing, the, the first thing you got to do is uh, lay a thread base. So, I'm going to bring that in a little bit. I'll try and lay a, a thread base. And I'm, I'm going to have to make a confession. I would have sworn I had size 12 2XL dry fly hooks. We have none. So this is on a nymph hook, and it, it would float a little better on a dry fly hook. I will have dry fly hooks next year. But for this year, we're going to have to make do with what we've got. So I'm going to start up at the end, and I'm just going to lay a thread base. And I'm going to go back 
maybe into the bin just slightly. Yeah, I've gone into the bin just, just a little bit. And then I'm going to get rid of my tag end. Okay. And I'm going to take my, my foam strip and I'm going to lay that tip right. I don't want to get it too far forward. You want that tip tied in right where that bend is or maybe a little bit into the bend. Because if not, what you're going to see, when we put the, the red part on, we're going to not use the, the tail end. We're going to end up having to, I had you cut five so that you have something to hold on to. And we're going to tie it in right before that last segment. And if you look, you can see where the, the front end is going to hang over the eye of the hook. That's part of the pattern design. Okay? So, <clears throat> I've got that on. Now I'm going to lay that back. I'm going to try and just tie that on right where I tied on the, the black foam. And then I'm going to get my scissors and I'm going to cut that off just as close as I can without cutting my thread. Okay? Now, several steps involved. I'm going to lift my red and I'm going to go forward until I come to that first joint. Then I'm going to tie that first joint in with two or three wraps. Then I'm going to go under. I'm going to go forward to the second joint. And I'm going to tie that one in. Okay? And I've got those two joints in. The next step is to take your overbody bring that over, squeeze it, leave it on top, and tie that in at that second joint. Okay? And you can still, you can ma manipulate that around a little bit still. Then I'm going to lift that up again, I'm going to go forward, and I'm going to tie my last segment in, right? Get my threads too much thread out. I'm going to bring that up. I'm going to tie that off right behind the eye. Okay. And then I'm going to bring my foam over. I'm going to tie that off at that same point. And then I'm going to trim this off close as I can get it. And you can see where the last segment is kind of hanging down on the eye of the hook. I'm going to lift that up, and I'm going to make some wraps up underneath that, just behind the eye. And see how it holds the, holds the eye up that way? Then I'm going to go back to where I, that last tie-in, and I'm going to whip finish that off. Three or four should do it. And you can still do some manipulation of the body at this point in time. Mine's kind of moved around a little bit. Okay, that looks a little bit better. Okay. Then you can tie this off, cut it off, get rid of that tag end. And where's my stopper? All right. Now, the next step is a little tricky. If you take one of your longer strands of red thread, fold that over in half, and cut that into two equal pieces, approximately two equal pieces. Okay? Now, I've got my two pieces. Watch how I'm going to do this. Because this is the only really tricky part. I'm going to make a, try to make a loop with my thread. 
And then that tag end, I'm going to bring back down, and with tweezers or a dauber or whatever, I'm going to go through, and I'm going to grab those two ends. I know, you can't. I can't see it either. I know, I can't see it either. Wait till I can see it. Okay, now I've gone in the loop, and I've grabbed that. I'm going to pull those two strands through. I'm going to do that twice. I'm going to bring those two strands back behind again. Then I'm going to go in. Ah. Ball thumbs now. I'm going to grab them again. Bring them through. Now I've got just two overhand knots is what that is. Loops through. Now this is going to be the legs. Al Hasi told me that ants only have six legs, so in the pattern I think it calls for four, or eight total. Now we're going to end up with six. You want those knots that you tied, you want that on the bottom. So I'm going to put that over the, the pattern with the knots on the bottom, and those double legs, I'm going to put them in with a first place that I tied a loop. Okay? Before we finish, I would want to put a little dab of head cement or something on that so that that loop doesn't come undone. Now I'm going to go ahead and do these one at a time. I'm going to hold those up and I'm going to cut that off so they're all about the same length. And I brought with me two of these zappers. Notice how some of these ends are going to want to fray. If you try to do that with a cigarette lighter, you'll end up like I did. I, had, I worked well on one side, the other side caught on fire before I could blow it out. That pair of legs was about that long, the other was about that long. These are very precise. The shorter one doesn't light up, doesn't glow red like the other one, but it gets hot enough that this material, if you just leave that on and just zap it, you see the smoke, it will cauterize that end, and I think it will keep it from coming apart, fraying. So separate the two ends, and we'll just have to pass these around. I don't know how many other people even have some of these. But they come in handy for a lot of different functions. Do not touch that end unless you want a little blister, whatever, wherever you touch it. Okay. Now, normally I would do uh, both those legs at, at one time. But I'm going to, I did it separately so I could show the steps. If you take one of those strands and cut it in half, one half works perfectly for the, six, the third pair of legs. Okay, now I'm going to do it with just one, one thread. I'm going to do what I did with the, the two before. If I can get my finners to work. I'm going to, instead of working with two threads, I'm just working with one. That's just about as far as it'll go. Okay, now I've got, see I've got one loop through. I'm gonna put that loop behind, go through, and grab it again, bring it through again. Now I've got a, I've got a double knot on that. I want the knot on the bottom. And I'm gonna put this second one right where we tied that first one in or the, where we tied the second one in, excuse me. I'm going to pull that tight, and I'm going to pull that up, and I'm going to cut that off, maybe a little, slightly longer than the other one, because when I cauterize it, uh, I'll lose a little bit of length. And I'm going to separate those so I keep them out of the way. I'll use the other one this time. I haven't used this one at home. Um, this one, you'll notice when I... When I get it turned on, it turns, see I turn bright red? It is super hot. And you just 
barely need to, to, to tap that tip. And I've got that done. So I'm going to try and separate those legs a little bit. And Al would be glad to know that I, we only have we have the proper number of legs on an ant. We have six instead of eight. But that is Fishy Fulham's red ant. 